that pocket, 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 pocket. Ra. This is the remix. Oh. Eric Uyapalori remix. Oh. Remix is seeking. Oh. The conurbation called Lagos is that the dirt on his cuffs has come to signify the city's main claim to fame. The energy of the city and the candle spirit of its citizens has created an iconic status for the city. The iconification of the Lagos situation can be read as an infatuation with the mystery of a city that runs on an unimaginable level of chaos and admiration for its ever smiling denizens whose capacity for suffering and smiling is nothing less than legendary. Lagos is not loved for its architecture. Lagos is a city of irony. And there is no greater irony in the unfolding of the mega city than the one represented by Rem Kohase's assertions on the city and the divergent responses that his interest tends to generate among the Lagos literati. Rem it was who applied the rigors of Western theory and analysis, albeit a unique band of his own making to the swirling urban mess at the turn of the millennium and got everybody else looking at the city in new ways. His exploration developed rapidly from an inquiry into the effects of shopping on the growth of Lagos to an analysis of the self-modulating systems that have kept the city together since the breakdown and its well-being reached a peak in the 1980s, right after a boom period in the previous decade. For one half of the aforementioned Lagos literati, there is great reverence for Kohasi's deductions that Lagos is the model other cities will have to aspire to in the future. For the other half, his postulations are greeted with cynicism as being all but patronizing. While the argument rages, the fact remains that the effort of the others at explaining us and the uniqueness of the others' perspectives which throw up angles we never considered has put our mad city on a whole new pedestal of global inquiry. And that is where our architects are going to get caught pants down. This is a city that attracts the finest the world has to offer and swirls it with all the grime in the blended machine called Lagos life. Urban design depends on the ability of the architects of the micro components of the city, those individual buildings we all love or hate to tap into a broader vision and provide the right set piece with which great cities are built. Perhaps being an urban jungle whose sole claim to design fame is the uncoordinated efforts of its hapless users, Lagos cannot be accused of any pretensions towards beauty. But for a city that has defined the popular and contemporary culture of a nation over several decades, it is startling to realize that Lagos has failed to birth a unique architectural aesthetic that can be bequeathed to the rest of the world as our contribution to the unfolding development of the art of building. Lagos, the much loaded city of sophistication, uh, the Imbari movement and the Zaria Art Rebellion of your were early artistic influences that have shaped the development of Nigeria's contemporary art scene by identifying in the 60s the need to define their art within their own cultural milieu and not within the imposed dictates of a colonial heritage. They echoed a post-independence awakening and the attendant euphoria of that age and their works portrayed the spirit of the times. It appears unfortunately that the pioneering indigenous architects of that era who are western trained did not compare notes with the Zaria rebels. Definitely the students of latter day school of architecture like those in Zaria, Lagos, and Sukkot and Ife did not have the sort of courage and vision to steer their design education and subsequent professional inquiries in more indigenous directions that the rebels of the Zaria art school showed in the 60s. And therein lies the problem. This seeming inability to evolve a new class of designers that are keen and bold enough to define a unique identity for their built environment. Apart from building by the public works department which were really engineered in the mold of their colonial predecessors in providing utilitarian, well-built well -built accommodations, the next wave of development came by the effort of expatriate design firms like James Cubitt Architects, Godwin and Hopwood, Nixon Boris and Partners, who 
taking cue from the forerunning duo of Matthew Fry and Jane Drew of the Tropical Architecture fame, attempted to, in varying degrees of success, to apply modern trends in architecture to the sub-Saharan environment, especially on the Lagos Marina, where many of the awardee contributions to modern architecture still stand till date. Coming right on the heels of these expatriates were Nigerian architects, fresh from architectural schools abroad like Oluwole Olumuyua and Alex Ekweme, who came together to form the Nigerian Institute of Architects. The brilliant architects that they were, if they had employed their collective will towards pushing for a little more than the trade union and charted an an ideological direction for their successors to follow, perhaps Lagos will be known for a little more than chaos in today's global design discourse. Having said that, it was not an easy task that they were faced with. They had to contend with competition from expatriate firms who were at the forefront of the modern movement, a style that the Lagos elite had come to identify with as being progressive. Besides, buildings could be more complex than paintings and sculptures, needing a whole lot more input than the designer's whims, the client's approval, for, for example, which guarantees the much needed considerable funding for the vision to come true. Then there was the Civil War and the period of reconstruction afterwards, which slowed things down between 1966 and the early 70s. The oil-induced economic boom of the 70s saw a growth in the building industry, which soon took a downturn with the subsequent economic crisis which has lingered since the structural adjustment program of the 80s. Nigerian architects evolved a new style, subsistence architecture, to deal with, with the lean years. It's hard to engage in lateral thinking with a lean purse. You take a more brief than you should, rush through the motions, oftentimes recycling ideas, or worse still, replicating what you've seen in magazines, which you know the clients will jump at. It is now impossible to innovate, even more difficult to articulate and pursue ideologies. Which explains why in the thick of a latter day economic growth that has seen the lucky axis of Lagos become the fastest growing real estate stretch in West Africa, visitors to and many residents of the much hyped megacity should register displeasure at the sort of architecture that dots the peninsula. It may sound trite, fishing for ideologies and movements in Nigerian contemporary architecture at a time when the rest of the world appears exhausted with the isms and the new this and post that which architects have employed in extending the shelf life of time-worn styles. The Nigerian design scene, however, still holds promise, even if as a late entrant to the global ideological whirlpool. Movements and the styles they birth are essential signifiers for the identity of cities, nay, nation states. Lagos is a city in urgent need of direction. And if we are agreed on the role of architecture as a major subset in the urbanization experiment, then there is a need for the designers of Lagos's future to take a stand and start making credible statements. The elements for such a design renaissance are readily available. Like the high of music that grew strong as the blend of European and African sound forms at about the same time that the Imbari movement was defining the cultural space, there has been for the past decade a growth of an indigenous hip-hop culture that has effectively blended a black American sound form with a uniquely urban Nigerian sound aesthetic that has been well received locally and internationally. With a rapper like Mode 9 creatively chronicling the excitement, frustrations, and hopes of residing in Lagos in this decade in indigenous riffs that have global appeal, one wonders why architects in these parts seem far from seeing the prospect of pushing theories and styles and excitement out of the energies that Lagos pulsates with on a daily basis. Oh yeah, package, 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 package. Yeah. This is the remix of Eruku Yapalori remix of At ease, we are unserious. Unserious enough about our architecture to create great architecture. Welcome to the A Welcome zone. Welcome to the A zone. Welcome to much Welcome to much more. And Sass in the beats and oh!
Architecture is an international art. Contemporary architecture will be Rukikian, an export after considerable deformation. It has started. It started in the 15th century. Abu Ishaq as Sahili, the Spaniard, was the harbinger of the process. He brought the mud brick to Hausa land and this created an architectural response that was at once tropical and beautiful. Of course, the houses built beauties pre Sahili, but the mud brick was the precursor of architecture here. They took the mud brick and through a Requiquian process and created a version of it suited to their architectural thought, the tubuli brick. Then they created masterpieces. Masterpieces that were fragments, not of the city, but of themselves. Fragments of themselves. The house became a mini city with masterpieces. It became a place. We assert, therefore, that it is this Rukikian process that would create a new architecture that would embrace and solve all the challenges of living in this part of the world this 21st century. The house of tomorrow will be a place. And as such, we assert that house of traditional architecture is the harbinger of the home of the 21st century. Thank you. Oh yeah, pack it, pack it, pack it, pack it. This is the remix. Oh, a Rukuya Palori remix. Oh, remix you seeking. Oh, and sounds in the beats and. Aeroplane in the car wash. This drink so let fish shake out a box. When it comes to different styles, I'm a bit boss. You dey go sucker, show fresh fish is for the cast. Only fresh prison break a lag on. Only fresh fish draw more young. Kerosene, show let fish the NSC. Octopus ball, show let fish the past the future. I like to see a white girl bleaching. Or a blind deaf man preaching. I like to see Shoki do a catwalk. Or a Yahoo boy asking what his cops I don't like business class, the lecturers they told me. Big boy, even Tupac they call me. Corn doctors they hail me for London. I get bling bling all over my condom. Okay, <laughs> 